Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Dawn and I'm thrilled to have you guys here again today. I am very excited about this video because today I'm going to be talking about chakras, but not just the seven main chakras. Some of you may know that there are many, many, many other chakras. So I'm actually going to dive a little bit into still main chakras, but we're going to move beyond the seven and talk about the main 12. So if this is something that is interesting to you, please like and subscribe below because we are going to go on a little journey that is going to expand your mind and consciousness and hopefully help you along your awakening process. Stay tuned. All right, so before I dive into the 12 going beyond the seven, I have to review a little bit for those of you that still may not know what a chakra is. So I'm gonna be very, very quick in my description. I do have other videos about individual chakras and a video about the um, all seven kind of together. I go into much more detail. But in a nutshell, chakras are from Ayurvedic medicine and the concept is that there are seven main chakras along the midline of the body, each spinning in a clockwise fashion when it is balanced and open, um, all having a different color, the Roy G. Biv starting at like the pelvis, starting with red, um, orange, yellow, green, you know, all the way up. Um, and they each kind of represent a category within our bodies, like communication and expression, or our heart and love, or in the solar plexus, emotion, things like that, or in our third, uh, third eye, you know, our intuition and consciousness, right? So all of those kind of things. So depending on what's going on in your, our lives, they may be sluggish or slow or blocked and may need to be addressed. So it's really important for us to do our due diligence and work on our inner selves and do our shadow work with our seven chakras. So with the first chakra being at the root or kind of at the, the groin or pelvis, it is the color red and it represents your safety and security. The next one is called your sacral chakra. This is the color orange and it is just below your belly button. This one has to do with our passions and finding like our purpose in life. The next is the solar plexus. Right above the belly, it is the color yellow and it deals with all emotion, everything from joy and happiness to anger and fear. The next is the heart chakra. It is the color green and this is um, represents the love for yourself and uh, love for others. Then we have the throat chakra, which is the color blue and it represents uh, expression and communication verbally. Uh, then we have the third eye, which is the color indigo um, and it is how we connect to our intuition um, and our guides. We really, that's when we really start to transition from all of these human needs and qualities to more of a spiritual one. And of course, our crown chakra is on the top of our head or our crown, and it is the color uh, violet. And it is how we connect to um, our higher selves, the universe, the collective, um, basically how we understand and get a big, big picture of everything. So those are them in a nutshell. Please do more research if um, those are foreign to you. Um, it will just help you understand the video as I move forward. You can probably understand even in my brief description how each one of those seven chakras are all about you, your thoughts, your emotions, your communication, finding your purpose, loving yourself, right? So all of those have to do with this being, your light body being and the human within. So we have, I, I jokingly say that I, ha I live like two lives where I'm my light body being self and then my actual human, right? Um, and so uh, you have to uh, learn to work with and heal and ground and center all of those aspects of you um, to really be uh, at peace and whole, right? So this video is really for those of us that have done our inner work, have worked on our chakras, or um, have gotten to a point where we're really thirsting for more information. So we're gonna be moving beyond the seven chakras. All right, so I'd like to start off with, and I'll number them just so we can be less confused, um, but I'd like to start with the eighth chakra, which believe it or not, isn't here. I want you guys to focus all the way down on your feet. This particular chakra is how we connect with the earth or Gaia. Now there are other many chakras in other areas like in your wrists and elbows and knees, hips, things like that. Those are kind of like minor chakras in the joints because they still do stir up a lot of energy. 
Uh, but this particular chakra, I think, is so important, especially for the things that we've got going on right now. This chakra will ground you like like nothing else, right? So to open this chakra, I love to do meditations where you are visualizing uh, your energetic or spiritual roots growing through the earth and going way down deep into Gaia, right? And they've actually done a lot of uh, research on the electromagnetic waves that the earth gives off and the electromagnetic waves that our brain, specifically our brain gives off, our brain waves, and they typically match. Um, and so that I find very, very interesting we all love to be out in nature. We love to take our shoes off and stick them in the sand or the grass. It's very grounding for us, right? We can watch um, uh, through thermal imaging and just all kinds of other equipment. We can watch when somebody's actually standing barefoot in the grass. Um, you know, inflammation and all these different things in their body will actually um, calm down a crying baby. If a mother does that, the baby will stop crying if they're teething, things like that. So we know that the earth has this powerful connection with us. We depend on the earth for shelter, for food, um, for the sun and the rain and all of these things, right? For the, all the cycles it has, for the seasons, for the moon and sun rising and falling. And so um, to reset this connection, I think, is so powerful. We all really need to be grounded, no matter how much work we've done on ourselves and our other seven chakras. You know, to be very, very grounded right now will help you feel more centered and able to really listen to your higher self and hear your guides very clearly um, and reduce any amounts of fear that is uh, around us, right? All the circling chaos that's still around us all the time. So I love to focus on that one first and foremost as part of um, the higher level chakras, the advanced levels, we could call them. Now, this eighth chakra has a name. It's actually called the Earth Star, and it's just below your feet, between your feet and the Earth. It also helps us link our memories to our ancestors that have walked this Earth before as human beings, which I think is very fascinating and makes perfect sense, right? I also like to point out that the Earth has this beautiful ability to take anything um, an old, you know, building that nobody lives in anymore or a sick and dying and then dead animal. The earth will take those things and completely over time do what the earth does, growing trees and animals and all these things and eventually absorb that energy back into the earth and something beautiful then grows in that space. So what I like to look at from a observation perspective is that the earth has this beautiful ability to take toxins or um, the end of a cycle and transition it into a new growth, new beginning, and almost like a detox. And so the earth is also known to help detox and rebalance or reorganize or re-energize our own DNA, which is fascinating stuff. And when we actually work on opening this chakra and meditating with this particular earth chakra and Gaia, we're actually connecting ourselves back to humanity and back to the collective, which is, can also be really powerful as well. So I love to start with that chakra being one of the first and most important because the rest, we are, we are traveling off of this plane. Like we are going like way up here. So we do really need to be grounded to the earth because we are still very human, right? Um, even if we astro travel and things like that, we're still very human and having this experience. So we still have to be very, very grounded. So I love for that one to be the first of the advanced chakras. All right, moving on to chakra number nine. This is called your soul star chakra. It is right above your head and it usually looks like a little bit of like a shiny color to me, like a, like a white translucent pearly silver color. This chakra is how we connect to our divinity and divine love. Our spiritual connections are really growing in this particular chakra and it helps us to advance our intuition big time. Now, as you work on this chakra, do not be surprised if you start to have dreams or becoming maybe more aware of past lives. And remember, that doesn't always mean human past lives because this chakra is actually kind of like a gateway into our Akashic records. So for those of you that don't know, our Akashic records, the theory is that, um, our higher selves um, keep track of everything we've ever experienced 
um, as a light body being. So we are having a human experience right now, but we could also be having multiple other lifetimes and experiences. And to say past lives is kind of incorrect because there's no such thing as time. When we move beyond our physical reality here as human and we go into these higher level chakras. So to say past life gives a linear time frame. It's more correct to say my current other life <laughs> because they're usually happening all at the same time. So your Akashic Records is a record of everything you've ever done and experienced, good, bad, the ugly, and all these things. And when you haven't quite learned that lesson the way that you needed to, you will repeat them. So you'll hear sometimes people um, have contracts or um, you know they, are, they have reincarnated to come back and continue their Akashic Record things um, that they've signed up for, things like that. So this is a chakra where you can really expand and do a little bit of um, observing and even asking your guides and higher self to view or experience other types of lives that you may have had. They may give you big time clues to why you have other hangups in this lifetime or what you may need to heal um, in a, on a different lifetime and different plane. Now remember, in other past videos, I've talked about how the veil is very thin right now, and as we heal and work on ourselves right now, we actually are able to heal through time, which means you're also helping to heal aspects in your other lives as well. So, um, so if you do stumble across past life stuff where um, you do have some things that need to be worked on, you can work on them in this lifetime, which is fantastic, right? That's so cool. Before it was always kind of like, well, you had to stumble and, and work through it. You couldn't just go back and, and view it and then um, come back into this lifetime and be like, all right, I think I'm gonna work on that, you know? So this is really, really cool stuff. So this is also where you begin to really connect to your main spirit guides and your higher self. This is also where a lot of shamanic type healing, like medicine men and or women, um, and Reiki masters, and you know um, all of these beautiful ancient forms of healing. Right, this is kind of where they all reside because they're not necessarily human anymore. But now we have access to them. Again, no such thing as time. When you enter into this shock and you really start to develop and grow, you you really have access to these beautiful, wonderful light body beings that are ready to assist you in any way they can because that's what they signed up for, right? Which is really, really cool. So those of you that are Reiki practitioners or Reiki masters, I'll give you a little secret. Your Reiki master that did the attunements for you, they literally had these ancient symbols where they did a ceremonial um, attunement for you where they actually kind of opened up your aura and put the wisdom of these ancient ancestors and these symbols into your aura and then closed it, giving you um, a little bit of a thread to this actual chakra, a connection to your guides and to the ancestors so that every time you go to do Reiki, you are able to call upon them. You don't even have to think about it. They're right there, right? Um, to assist you. Um, and it's all about intention. As long as your intention is to send this person love, light, and healing, then that's exactly what happens. So that is really, really cool, um, I thought as well. Now, just think about that. Now that you know you have this entire light body team ready to work with you, you understand some more about your past lives and Akashic Records, it gives you the ability to really start to grow your own internal love and roots for yourself and really start to connect on a way deeper level to your human and your higher self, which is your light body version of you. All right, chakra number 10 is called the solar star, like the solar system, right? And we're going above the ninth into the 10th. The rest will all be above here. Um, and this particular chakra is huge in how we've now in the ninth really connected to our higher selves and some of our masters and guides, we can really start to connect with everybody on our team, on our team. And when I say that, I mean they're angels, light body beings, ascended masters, aliens, it doesn't matter. They're all wonderful, beautiful, loving light body beings that we have uh, formed a connection or bond with and plan to work together for positive growth, expansion of consciousness, healing, all those kinds of things, right? So this particular chakra links us to the spiritual realm. It helps us to communicate to our team of light and what my guides tell me all the time, this is where you can really start to remember 
who you are and what your gifts and abilities really are. If you're going to be, you know, a, a medium or some type of energy worker or a card reader or whatever it is, if you really in your heart feel like your purpose is to help other people in this spiritual way, this is when you remember that, right? Um, so this chakra is really interesting because you start to grow and expand your team and grow and expand your skills. Now, this is also where we have a really um, effortless way to connect to our angels, again, guides, um, but even past loved ones. So um, if you are a medium um, or on occasion you will have uh, dreams or experiences or seeing past loved ones, um, not that you maybe are a medium or want to be, but you're having that those kinds of experiences on occasion, it's because you're probably tapping into your 10th chakra. Now, this is a chakra that I absolutely have to work with when I channel, when I get downloads of information to share with you guys, and especially when I do mediumship sessions with my clients. So I essentially have to raise my vibration up and they drop their vibration down a bit so that we can be on literally the same frequency, the same vibrational frequency so that we can communicate, right? So this is a really, really cool chakra to work on and develop as well. And because you really trust yourself and you have so many guides um, at this level that you can really easily and effortlessly communicate with, you can obviously then manifest things like never before. Um, so that's another really exciting thing that you can do when you really start to access this particular chakra and um, work with it because um, getting whatever it is that you need or want that helps you move forward in a positive spiritual way or if it's best for all involved, you'll be able to manifest it very quickly. And I kind of look at it and now it's called the solar star. I kind of, when I view it, I kind of see it as this like, kind of like blue greenish, deep, uh, deep blue greenish kind of color like 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 space you know like i kind of look like it looks like that to me but like sparkly chakra number 11 is called the galactic chakra and it's kind of got like an orangey pinky starburst kind of look to it um when i ask my guides to show me what it looks like um that's kind of what it appears to me and of course this chakra is above the 10th so this is chakra number 11 and this is where we're really now moving into divine knowledge and cosmic wisdom right we are fully now engaged working with our team of light we understand how to move through these chakras and get there. Most of the time, when you connect to your higher self at the ninth chakra, you will be using your actual light body higher self to move through these chakras, right? Um, in the last video, I mentioned my team of light, my main higher self, Zaya. This is how I move through these chakras, right? So you will be able to connect to um, basically things that are in a... Um, you know, we have our earthly world in plane. This is a galactic world in plane. So we're talking about all other planets, all other species. And I also do mean aliens because if they're not us, then they're something else, right? Um, and this is where we can communicate to higher level vibrational beings like, you know, the Octarians, the Palladians, um, and other well-known non-human uh, light body beings that have information for us. So for those of you that may um, follow other uh, light workers that talk about the Galactic Alliance or um, things like that, this is, ha this is kind of where they have to go to channel to get that information. Um, so this is a really neat chakra as well. Now on occasion, I will go with Zaya up into this particular chakra if there's a vital message that they want to share with me. Um, having to do with the Galactic Alliance. Um, I don't push that, you know, like I don't keep pushing and knocking on that door. I, um, for this moment, I just kind of let them share with me and I'll ask, do you have something to share with me? Um, at my round tables when I have a little chit chat, like a little team meeting, right? My little team meeting with all my um, light body beings. Um, and, and basically right now, my goal is to get information that will be helpful 
for you guys along your healing journey and help you expand your consciousness and help you with your awakening process more that's like more my focus than it is to to channel the galactic alliance although sometimes they have information for me my guides have information for me um you know like holding space and and sending love and light at certain times because it helps shift frequencies and vibrations making their job a lot easier now here's the big thing i just kind of gave you a little goose egg here <laughs> So if we know once we're in these particular chakras, essentially you're basically at this point astro traveling, you are moving through galaxies and to places all over um, the galactic, you know, universe, right? Which means at this point you are traveling through time, right? Because time doesn't exist in these particular areas, right? Time exists to us here in human form. This is a very temporary experience, right? Our light bodies um, are more, um, I don't wanna say permanent, but more um, situated in more of like a foundational, structural, semi-permanent fashion. Um, this is just a temporary fragmented version of us, right? Having this experience. This is also where not only astral travel, but teleportation, all kinds of crazy things that sound made up, even like biolocation, things like that. But we also know that mm, the government and a lot of other um, people have not only done tons of research on this, they have documentation saying that this is something that is not just plausible, but they have trained and taught other people to do. So um, you don't have to believe me. You do not. You can go look all that up for yourself. The CIA has released many documents on these types of topics. Um, but just remember, that you um, at this point have done a tremendous amount of work on yourself. You constantly are um, around beings of love and light. Um, and if you are going to um, do some of those things, make sure that what your intentions are and you should be totally fine. But um, it would be foolish to think that um, you are the only one moving and shaking up there. So um, not that I want to give you any negative or scary fear-based information. I just want you to be aware that um, that you this takes time and practice and that we really need to be aware of what we're doing and why um, and that our intentions are always of pure love and light and things like that. So as long as you got that going on, you're good. You can travel, you can teleport, you can biolocate and do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, the 12 and essentially last chakra my guides wanted to share with me and told me to share with you is called the Divine Gateway. And it's kind of like this beautiful, bright gold yellow color. It is basically universal consciousness and it is how we are connected to source. So this um, final chakra is kind of like, again, that gateway to all the beautiful, amazing, wonderful things, um, you know, to God, source, energy, universal energy, this all knowing, right? That is this, this particular chakra, right? So this opens us up again to explore other worlds, other realms, other realities, um, and really understand them from a very different um, uh, perspective, right? Um, now, for me personally, we're all on a growth and all on a journey, right? Um, this particular chakra isn't one that I have a lot of experience with. I know what it is. I can see it. They discuss it with me. Um, but it has been very few times that I have kind of been able to like open that gate and move through that. Um, uh, and you know what? It's fun playing around with all the other ones. So, and I and I am just because um, how we work on all the seven chakras here. I'm also working and growing and developing all these other chakras. Um, you know, basically eight through eleven. And so um, that's kind of right now where I'm hanging out. That's my sweet spots. Ten years ago, I was working on my personal chakras, right? So I know it's um, all essentially just a matter of time. Um, but this chakra is a really, really beautiful one. And the way they show it to me is when you get to this twelfth level chakra and get through this gate it just like blows up and expands and it's kind of what I would like to think of like heaven like um where it's just unbelievably bright and beautiful and um you know full of loving light and just unbelievable amounts of knowledge you can literally tap into and plug in it's like if you had uh the the internet in like the, uh, the most beautiful healing loving version of the internet so nothing bad and weird um but like you could literally like plug in or tap in and just 
experience or download anything that you wanted. So it's really, really cool um, chakra. Now, some people actually do access this chakra and open it up. A lot of times they call themselves gatekeepers because they literally have such a direct line of this divine, unconditional love. They can literally use and download some codes and information to help stabilize the energetic meridian lines or channels on our own planet. And so they call themselves gate wakers and they gate, um, I'm sorry, gatekeepers, and they work um, in conjunction with the moon and solar flares and the sun and their guides and source and all these things to really pull down this information and put it into the earth's vibration. And then we walk on the earth and we each individually kind of start to expand our consciousness and absorb this information unknowingly to us, right? So I think it's really fascinating because I've always focused on people, like helping people expand. Gatekeepers are focusing on the earth expanding, knowing that the earth will have this ripple effect out um, to the rest of humanity and things like that. So that's kind of neat. Um, we all, and I say light workers, right? Because we all have this um, desire to help heal and, and make things a more peaceful, calm, grounded, centered, beautiful um, thing, whatever it is, an animal, a plant, a human, um, the earth, right? And so whatever you believe, whatever um, drew you into this video, just be really open-minded about what it is that you are starting to um, venture off into and um, you know, let yourself have these amazing experiences and let yourself really develop um, and on your chakra, your internal kind of self chakras so that you can expand and really experience some of these amazing things on these higher level chakras. Now, I would love to hear more from you guys in comments if you've done any meditations or had any experiences with these particular chakras. And just know that if you're having other experiences with light body beings and things like that, you gotta be doing something right. Because you can't, uh, you know, like a, a toddler doesn't understand calculus calculus. You've got, there are steps, right? So if you're having these experiences or asking these questions, right? Um, then you know that you're kind of, it's in alignment with what is for your highest good. So that's amazing too. So kind of pat yourself on the back if you're having some of those kind of cool experiences as well. Now, I'd also like to point out, again, there's all different types of uh, beliefs out there on how many chakras you have from like 40 to, you know, seven to whatever. But I asked my guides out of all of those out there, why did they keep telling me? And, and I questioned it, like, why was there 12? So I want to tell you guys something really special. So um, a book I wrote a couple years ago called Awaken Conversations, my guides were very adamant about there being like 12 um, different parallel universes that are in alignment with us. Um, how we have to repeat certain lives in a particular area like like earth we have to repeat it at least 12 times or something similar right maybe not earth but something very similar where the emotions and your thoughts in a physical body and all these experiences are very similar right um and they always talk about 12 so i asked them i really asked them and they they um why that was so significant and and this is kind of some of the information that came to my mind but also that i didn't even think about so the number 12 being very important, here are some patterns as to the importance of it. So there are 12 uh, levels of reincarnation. There are 12 main chakras that I just shared with you. Each level, so the astrological sign for 12 in numerology signifies completion. There are 12 months in a year. If we want to get a little bib biblical, there are 12 sons of Jacob or 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus had 12 apostles. Revelations had 12 gates and 12 angels. I am particularly a Pisces, which is the 12th uh, sign. And they say that that sign has reincarnated a lot and that that sign has a lot of wisdom. In Greek mythology, uh, 12 is a, the one of the gods, the 12th one was Olympus. And they also say that the number 12 means cosmic order, space and time. And we also know when we're talking about time, um, you know, 12 is, you know, each hour on the clock. 
yeah, so that's that's what I had written down. So some of those were kind of obvious to me and other ones I didn't really know, but it kind of seems like there's this pattern. And if you know me, you know I've talked a lot about patterns. So when we see patterns like that, there's a reason for it, right? Now, I'm not saying that I know the reason exactly why, but I just listen to my divine guidance. And when they say 12 main chakras, I'm like, cool, I'm listening, right? Um, so that's kind of where I sit on the chakras. There are other um, chakras, you know, and joints and other things. And you, we could sit here all day talking about them. But those are the ones that my guides told me. These are the 12 main chakras. And they actually um, made me do a couple of things that I'm going to share with you before I really started um, working with the higher level chakras. Um, my guides shared this information with me and they said, but before you can venture off into these, these chakras, which I had kind of dabbled in a little bit, but they were like, you need to start incorporating them on your daily meditations. So every morning when I wake up, I do what I call like a check engine light. So I go through every little chakra all the way up my body um, through all seven chakras. And I just kind of like um, say this little phrase, um, please have this chakra spin in harmony with myself and the universe and function how source intended. Um, and I kind of just go through. So I feel like it just kind of sets the tone for my day. And they were like, no, you've got to incorporate all 12. And I'm like, what are you talking about all 12? So that's how this conversation came about. And they said, before I could really start venturing into them, I really needed to do one last clean clear over. So for a week straight, guys, a week straight, I had to sit and do like one last sweep over and do all my shadow work. And they made me sit and do these little categories. So I had to pull up all my uh, friendships, good, bad, any friendships that I had and do my shadow work, look at them and say, okay, you know, I handled it this way. You handled it that way. I see where, you know, I see that your trauma led you to handle this situation that way. It wasn't very cool. I'll take responsibility for what I did and said, but I send you with love and light. Every single job, friendship, romantic relationship, um, you name it co-worker I had to sit with these categories and it was like all these people lined up and it took a long time I had to like with all the people basically I have a cross paths with I had to sit there and do it for everything before they really let me fully experience these um advanced chakras okay which is kind of interesting I think so here's another little phrase that they had me write down specifically so I'm just going to read it really quick to you guys so when you're working on all of your seven chakras or even these higher ones, um, this is a, just like a fun little phrase that you guys can try and just see if it resonates with you. So they said to repeat this for each chakra, please clean and clear this chakra so that it may be in harmony with my highest good and the universe and function as it was intended by source. So it's just another version of the one that I always um, say every morning. Now remember, you want to make sure when you're doing any type of shadow work, especially when we're working on these, these higher level chakras, to be really forgiving, really open-minded, surrounding every ounce of yourself and that chakra in love and light, uh, because the last thing you want to do is really stand in your own way. Now, we've done it. I've done it. You know, everybody's kind of done that. You don't really notice you're standing in your own way or self-sabotaging until it's really uh, clear. There'll be a moment where it's very clear and obvious to you. So just be aware that if you're, um, you know, um, really excited and want to have this new shift and growth in your consciousness and you really want to venture into some of these higher level chakras, again, that you're just doing it with um, love and light and for beautiful positive intentions because the world needs more of us that are awakened and the world needs more of us light workers that can tap into, um, you know, this source, love, unconditional um you know, energy that we can connect with our guides and our, our um, archangels and, you know, and really download these beautiful, um, you know, supportive information for others that are still kind of working through some other three dimensional selves. Um, and also don't be disappointed when you are have been working on all this and you do feel like you've been doing an awesome job and uh, you kind of get sucked back into 3D every once in a while that you're human. That's totally normal, too. And the last thing also is be really aware of your ego. Just because you can do these things and somebody else doesn't understand them or doesn't have these same experiences does not mean that anybody is any better or any less. It just means that you're in a different 
space, right? You're in a different space. You're in a different, uh, you're at a different level of expansion and consciousness, but it's not better or worse. There's nobody like better. I'm not better than anybody because I can do the things that I do. It just means that I worked really freaking hard at it, right? But me and who I am doesn't mean I'm better at any, um, at you know, better than anyone else. So um, keep your ego in check too, because sometimes it gets really exciting and you're like, look what I can do, because you're kind of proud of yourself. And that's beautiful. Just make sure you do it with bright intentions. All right, I think I kind of gave you guys all the information. Let me channel really quick and make sure that my guides don't want to add anything else. So just give me one quick minute and let me ask them if there's anything else that they want to add to this, um, you know, explanation of the higher level chakras. All right, let's see. Okay, so um, my guides are wanting me to explain to you that um, they were so excited about me sharing this information and um, they want me to explain that um, if you were really struggling with these higher level chakras, it just means that you got to go back down and visit some of these others. There's something else going on. And so don't get frustrated or disappointed. Um, it just means that um, you just have a little bit of work to do and then you can go back to practicing again, right? And also that not everybody's uh, mission or purpose is to work with these higher level chakras. Your mission and purpose may be very simple. It may be to, um, but so, so, so profound. So simple as in, um, I don't want to, simple as in like um, not so etherical and not so, um, you know, expanding, expanding consciousness and mind and hippy dippy. More simple in that um, maybe it's just um, understanding the healing power of um, plants and herbs and, and learning them so well that you actually help people heal. Like that is, I feel like, um, things that you can plant and do with your hands and see and practice and, um, you know, which I think to some people may be a lot more tangible and easier and, and pleasurable than, um, you know, trying to kind of get up into these higher level chakras. So what they're saying is like everybody's skills, again, going back to what I was saying before, your skills as like a light worker, a medium, a card reader, you know, energy master, you know, or a Reiki master, energy healer, doesn't matter, whatever, herbalist, um, whatever else I can throw in there, um, you know, those are all equal skills. And so they're saying like you, not to do all of those very well, you don't always have to go up into these higher chakras. So that's kind of what they're saying. Like you don't, don't like feel like, don't force yourself or don't feel like, you know, if you aren't really, this doesn't like, you know, tickle your fancy and, you know, and you're not super stoked about it. Like it's okay. You probably, your purpose as a light worker is probably just not having to do that. So that's what they're saying. Like, um, again, and this is kind of why I said the last thing that I did before I channeled was, you know, um, each person's where they are, um, even as a light worker is still incredibly valuable. It just doesn't, um, there's not a better than kind of thing. Um, all right, let me see if there's anything else. Okay, good. So they're saying that to move into these higher level chakras, you 100% are only your higher self and your guides will only allow you to do so if you are re have really embraced that you are love and light. You are an amazing light body being having this human experience and you move through these chakras as a beautiful glowing light body being and that's how you see yourself. They literally will not allow you to open them um, because they are telling me that, um, you know, there's it's they're powerful. And so there's a lot of energy going on and you just have to be at a level where you can handle it. For example, um, I wouldn't go to the, to the gym and expect to like bench press like 400 pounds. My human is not prepared to do that. And I don't know if I would ever be physically prepared to do that. So that's kind of what they're saying. Like you have to be prepared emotionally, mentally, spiritually to go into those. And if you're not prepared, like you're just me, scrawny little me going to bench press, they're like, it won't work. So that's another really important thing too. Like when you um, go into these higher level chakras, you are overwhelmingly consumed by amazing amounts of love, 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 and light. Um, and you are very well protected. And if you're not at a level to handle that yet, um, 
then they won't allow that because they don't want you to have any negative experience because this is so beautiful and amazing. Um, and so they don't want you to like, like I wouldn't go to the gym and do that because I wouldn't want to hurt myself. You know what I mean? And that's kind of in a similar facet. Like they don't want you to have a negative experience. So they just won't allow it until you're ready. Um, and so, um, but they will, they will allow you to experience it enough to where you know that they're there and what their functions are. Just like, um, with my, the 12th chakra, you know, like I don't hang out there, but I know what it is. I know how it functions, you know, like that kind of thing. Right. So, um, so yeah, you can kind of get more. I'd love to hear from you guys, um, how you maybe meditate and experience these and more information that, um, you may have as well. Cause this was just from my guides and my experience. So I'd love to hear your guys' experiences as well. So I hope you liked the video. I know this is super abstract and um, kind of really outside of um, you know the box but then again a lot of my videos are so I appreciate you guys hanging in there um, and I hope you have uh, wonderful experiences and meditations from here on out and as always love and light my friends <laughs>